Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'll be exploring the return to home feature of the Mavic Mini. I've had a lot of questions about it on the channel, so I thought I'd sit down and put together a clip that explains what it is, how it works on the Mavic Mini, and why it might be the most important safety feature included with your new drone. Now, return to home sounds like a really simple thing to do, and a lot of quads in the market brag about their return to home capabilities, but honestly, under the surface, there's a lot of sophisticated technology that has to work perfectly in concert to enable that feature. On the Mavic Mini alone, there's circuitry that's monitoring all those important functions like GPS, IMU, compass, battery levels, signal strength back to the remote, and all of those circuits together are what the quad uses to determine how it gets back to its takeoff point. Now, a few things to remember on the Mavic Mini in particular. The first is, it has to know where it took off. So when you first power up your quad and it's sitting on the mat, when you elevate off the mat, you should make sure that you've set your home point. You'll know that because the application will say home point set. That means that the quad knows exactly where it took off. So when it gets far down the field, if it needs to come home and you hit the return to home button or it's triggered automatically, it can find the exact spot it took off. Another important thing to keep in mind is that you have to set a return to home height. Now, the default is about 20 meters or 60 feet. If you're flying in a field with any size trees, you're going to run into a tree on the way back because the Mavic Mini doesn't have a crash avoidance system built in. So the first thing I'll tell you before you ever test the return to home is go into the application and set that return to home height at 150 or 200 feet. And that way you'll be sure to clear most obstacles you're flying near, but that's really important. The last thing I'll say is that there's a couple of different ways that return to home can be triggered. You can trigger it manually or certain conditions inside the drone will trigger it automatically. And those are the safety features that'll keep you from having the drone fly away on you or landing someplace because the battery's too low. So there's really three different modes. They talk about four in the manual, but it really comes down to three. The first one is called smart return, and that's where the pilot triggers the return to home. You can do that by hitting the button here or hitting the return to home button on the application. What that does is forces the quad to stop what it's doing, elevate to your return to home height, turn back towards the home point, fly back, and then land. Now, unfortunately, the Mavic Mini doesn't have precision landing, so it's not gonna land exactly where it took off, but it's gonna come down within a couple of feet of where you actually took off, and the nice part is you can use the controller to sort of dial it in to land it back on that mat. The other two modes are called fail-safe mode and low battery mode, and both of those have nothing to do with the pilot and everything to do with the drone. So in the fail-safe mode, the drone is constantly monitoring both the control signals from the controller to know that the pilot's still in control, as well as the video feed from the drone back to the controller. If either of those fail for more than 11 seconds, the drone takes over, triggers a return to home, and will actually fly back and land exactly where it took off. So failsafe is really important. The last one is low battery mode. Now low battery mode is something that occurs when the quad gets to a point where it's far enough away and there's only enough power left in the batteries to get it back to its home point and land. And it's gonna yell at you an awful lot. So when it gets to that point where it's saying, I'm at a criti critical battery level, you better bring me back home, it's gonna start beeping like crazy. If you ignore that, it's gonna trigger a return to home. Now you can cancel that, but if you cancel it in a low battery mode, it's typically going to land wherever it happens to be when the batteries run out. So it's always going to have enough battery power to get it down from height to land it. But if that's over a lake or it's over a forest or a field with really tall grass, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to find your drone. So those three modes are really important. Now I'm going to take you outside in a minute and show you how all three of those modes work. I'm actually going to turn off the controller to put it in fail safe mode. I'm going to fly it down to a level where the battery's low enough where it triggers its own low battery return to home. And I'll show you how to instigate it from a pilot perspective. But the key thing to remember with return to home is it's one of those safety features that will prevent flyaways. It'll make sure that the drone in conjunction with the pilot, is constantly monitoring all the circuits that matter inside the quad. And if something inside the quad says, I'm in a sketchy situation because I've lost connection with the controller or my batteries are low and the pilot's not paying attention, it'll take over, trigger that return to home and bring it safely back to that takeoff point. Now, if you stay tuned, I'll take you out in the field and actually show you how all three of these work. Then I'll come back with some conclusions at the end. Now I'll demonstrate the three different return to home scenarios. But before I get started, there are a few things to keep in mind. And the first one is the golden rule of flying. Anytime you're gonna fly your quad, take a breath. Never rush into a flight. Always let the quad boot up, 
let the controller boot up, make sure you have a strong connection between the two. That gives the quad a few minutes to acquire the GPS satellites to know exactly where it's sitting because if you trigger that return to home or it happens as part of an emergency, the quad really needs to know where to come back to. It needs to know its takeoff point. And the only way it can figure that out is by having those GPS coordinates locked at the point of takeoff. So I've already booted up the quad and the controller. They're connected. The next thing you want to be sure of is that you have a good number of GPS satellites. And the way you can check that is in the upper right hand corner of the screen. There's a couple of dots up there. If you hit that, it'll list how many satellites you have. Right now I have 14, which is more than enough to give that quad a 3D spatial picture of where it's sitting on the planet so it can find its way back home. The first one I'm going to demonstrate is called Smart Return to Home. And that's the one where the pilot actually triggers the return to home event. And that's a great one to have because if you're flying somewhere and you lose sight of the quad, you're not sure exactly where it is, or maybe you're getting too close to trees or something like that, you can hit the return to home button on the controller, or you can hit that little circle with the H in it on the actual application, and that'll trigger the return to home. Now, before I take off, the other thing I want to check is my return to home height because you have an adjustment you can make on that. You can't really go below 60 feet, which for this field would be a disaster because if I was over there behind those trees, it would rise to 60 feet and try to come home and it would clip those trees on the way back. So I've set it at 60 feet right now just to demonstrate to try to keep it in frame because I'm gonna send it straight across the field. But you definitely wanna set your return to home height well above any obstacle in the area. So in this field, I'd probably put it at 120 or 150 feet so it would clear all the trees on its way back. You have to remember that unlike a lot more sophisticated quads, the Mavic Mini doesn't have any crash avoidance, whereas some of the other quads that are smarter, if you set it too low and it sees an obstacle, it'll stop and typically go over it and then continue its route home. But in this case, if you don't set a height, it's gonna stop at 60 feet and then come home. And again, that could be a problem in the field. So let me put it up and I'll send it downfield. Now I'm gonna keep it kind of low so you can see it. And I'll get it out there a little bit. Make sure it's out more than 20 meters. All right, so that's pretty far out. Now what I'm gonna do is trigger the return to home by holding this button, you'll hear it start beeping. All right, now right now it's rising in the sky up to, should stop at 60 feet, let's see what happens. And it's still facing the direction it was. All right, I'm at 60 feet, now it's turning back towards me and it's coming back at an incredibly fast clip. <laughs> so it's gonna probably, hopefully stop right above me. All right, slowing down, there we go. And it's figured out it's figured out its 3D position in the sky, and now it's descending. Now, it doesn't have a precision landing yet on the return to home, but it's coming down just nice here, nice and slow, and it's making some minor adjustments as it's coming down, so it's not quite right over the mat. The nice part about that safety return to home is I have control over it, so as it gets closer to the mat, I can see I'm going to be off a little bit, so I'm going to back it up, and I'll move it to the one side, back it up a little bit more, move it to the other side, and you can kind of guide it in to make sure that you get it on the mat, which I'm pretty close on right there. There we go. And that's it. That's pretty much the safety return to home. And that's the one that I'll occasionally use, again, if I've lost sight of it or if all of a sudden I realize I'm over behind those trees and I, I shouldn't really be. i got to keep a visual line of sight on it. But if it gets away from me, I can hit the return to home. It'll go high enough where I can see it. Then I can abort the return to home and actually fly where I need to. So that's a really handy one to have and one that I recommend new pilots get familiar with because if you get close to an obstacle, that may be something you want to trigger to get it back home safely. Now stay tuned and I'll show you the other two. This next mode is called Failsafe Return to Home, and as that name implies, it's one of the many safety features built into the Mavic Mini to help prevent flyaways. It automatically triggers whenever the connection between your remote controller and the drone is gone for more than 11 seconds. Now that can be the control signals from the remote to the drone, or the video feed back from the drone. And it's almost like the drone is pushing the return to home button because it's lost connection to the person flying. And that's a really good thing. So it immediately will elevate to your return to home height and fly home just as if you hit the button. It's just that the drone is hitting the button. So I'll demonstrate that now by sending the drone downfield and then shutting off the remote control, which is simulating a loss of connection between the two. What I expect will happen, and I'm actually hoping will happen, is it'll elevate to 60 feet fly over top and then land down here. Now I won't be able to actually adjust the landing, so it's gonna come down somewhere in the grass over here, but let's give it a shot. All right, so let me spin up the props, send it down field. Again, I'll try and keep it in frame as long as I can. All right, I've got good GPS connections. I'm now turning off the remote. Remote's off, should take about 11 seconds for it to realize it. And once it realizes I'm no longer talking to it, it's gonna to elevate to 60 feet, 
There it goes. All right, so it's going up. I can't tell how high it is. That's about 60 feet. Okay, it stopped. Spinning around. And it's going to fly back. And it better stop right here. All right, it's coming back pretty quick. Now, remember, the GPS coordination is in the drone. It knows where it's going. All right, so it stopped right over top of the mat. And it's coming down. Now, I'm not going to turn the remote back on. It's off this whole time. But it's going to come down somewhere in the grass here, so it may be a little, a little messy when it lands. Yep, it's coming straight down over the mat. Seems like it's a little bit far to the side, but again, for me, the beauty of this is that I've lost connection. The drone realizes that after about 10 seconds and says, I better get back to where we took off. And here she is right here. Now I could hand catch that and turn it off, but I'm going to let it land down here because the grass isn't that high. So that's your fail safe return to home. That's a really good feature to have because a lot of people that are flying drones worry that if the connection gets broken or they run out of battery on their remote, that the drone's just gonna fly off somewhere else. And the truth is it won't because it realizes I'm not talking to a pilot, maybe I ought to take charge and get back to where we started. So that's exactly what happens with that fail safe return to home. The third mode is called low battery return to home, which is a great safety feature that automatically triggers when the power level of the drone is just high enough to get it back to its takeoff point. Now that can happen for any number of reasons. For example, if you're out on a beautiful afternoon like this and you're flying your drone, maybe you're not paying attention to the battery level and it gets to a point where it becomes critical and the drone realizes, hey, I've got just enough power to make it back to the takeoff mat. Maybe I ought to let the pilot know like that, that I'm at a critical power level. Once you hear that beeping, you have a couple of choices. You can turn it around and spin it back, which is what I recommend you do. If you ignore this for a period of time, what's gonna happen is the drone's gonna take charge and it's gonna actually force a return to home from the drone. So I'll let this thing time out and we'll see what happens. Essentially, it should elevate to that 60 feet, which is what I've set at the return to home height, spin around and head back home. Now, if you decide to ignore this and continue to fly because I can cancel it, it's going to land wherever it lands when power is low enough for it to force it to land. So I could fly it back now, but I'm going to let the return to home take over. It's now elevated to 60 feet. It's spinning around just like it did in all the other scenarios, and it's heading back. And that's telling me I'm at a really critical power level. And the danger here is if you're flying on a really windy day, there may not be enough power to fly into the wind to get it back. But today it's pretty calm. All right, so we're at 60 feet right over the landing mat, and it's coming down. Now, the beauty is if you let this handle the remote to a return to home for you, you can actually still navigate as it's coming down. So it's descending right now. We'll get close to the mat, and then I can actually use the sticks to make sure I land it correctly. But I love that safety feature because it ensures that if I'm not paying attention, and I should be, but if you take your eye off it for a little bit, you may not, that it's going to come find its home point and land. So it sort of protects me as a pilot from being a goofy guy. And you can see how I can control it on the landing. And there you go. So again, home safe and sound. I love these safety features built into the quad because they prevent flyaways. They make sure that I'm not gonna lose a drone in the tree because the battery level got too low and I wasn't paying attention. All things considered, it's an incredibly smart drone. One other really important thing to keep in mind with all three of these return to home modes is that the drone needs to be at least 20 meters or about 60 feet away from its takeoff point for them to work correctly. If you're closer than that, and the return to home is triggered in any of those scenarios, instead of that drone elevating to its return to home height, finding its home point, and then landing, it'll just land. And that can be really dangerous if you're flying near tall grass or over water, and you're 30 feet offshore, and a return to home is triggered, you're going to expect it to go up and find its home point, and it's going to go down towards the water. Now, the good news is you can abort the return to home, you can control it manually so you can bring it in, but it's really important you know that. And I'll demonstrate it now. So I'll spin up the rotors, I'll send it downfield about 30 feet. Now I'll trigger the return to home here on the controller. And I'm expecting it to go up. And look what's happening. It's heading down. Now if that's tall grass or water, that's a really bad situation. So I'm going to cancel the return to home. And again, I can fly it manually. And it's not really that big a deal. Because if you're far enough away where you can barely see it, it's going to go through return to home. But again, if you're on the edge of a shore or you're over a field with tall grass and you're not paying attention to it, you're looking for it to go up and the thing's going down. It's going to land in that tall grass and really tear up those propellers. So just be mindful of that. 
I hope you found those examples helpful. And return to home is one of those wonderful functions that's built into the Mavic Mini that you typically only find in more sophisticated drones. Now, again, it doesn't have precision landing like some of the larger Mavics do, but it comes down close enough to your takeoff point where you can take control from the joysticks and actually land it right in the mat like I showed you in a couple of those examples. I love the fact that the quad is smart enough to sort of second guess me as a pilot because you're supposed to keep track of all the stuff that's going on like battery levels and signal strength, but you can get excited out in the field. You're flying the thing around and all of a sudden you realize I'm at 15% battery and I'm way down the field. I better get back here. So it's nice that it lets you know, hey Rick, you should be paying attention, but I'm downfield and I'm running out of battery. I love that. I also love the fact that it's smart enough to get back to the takeoff point and then still allow me to land it. A lot of the other quads take over control at that point. So they're gonna fly back and come down wherever they happen to land. And if you're flying it like I was today in a field and I've got a mat down with a lot of tall grass around it, I really wanna have control over that drone when it's descending so I can dial it right in on the mat. So I love that feature inside the drone. It is a little bit different than some of the other drones that I fly. So I hope I explained it well enough for you guys to understand it. If I've missed anything or you have questions about it, please drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. If you need accessories for your Mavic Mini, we have a ton of accessories available for this product. I've actually got the leg extensions on it now, which is something I love because again, if I'm landing it in grass, I like to have a little bit of extra clearance underneath it. But if you need accessories to help you fly a little bit safer, a little bit more fun when you're out in the field, I've got a link below as well that'll take you to our website and you can check that stuff out there. So thanks an awful lot for watching. Until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.